Góðan daginn, dömu mínar og herrar og verið hjartalega velkomin á þessa kynningu um golfbox. Við ætlum að hafa þetta fyrirkomulag þannig að það verður kynning. Martin Grönn sem hingaði mættur frá golfbox ætlar að vera með kynningu á kerfinu sem hann fer yfir á eftir og ég ætla að útskýra aðeins nána hvernig fer fram. En ég finnst samt alveg þess virði fyrst að við erum svona mörg komin hingað og fulltrúar margra golfklúpa að kannski eiða svona tveimur til 30 mínútum í að fara yfir af hverju við erum hér og hvernig við komast hingað. Í örstuttu máli fyrir þau ykkar sem ekki vitið að þá höfum við þetta verið með okkar eigið kerfi golf.is í núna 20 ár sem við höfum þróað sjálf með aðstóð ítega en í gegnum tíðina hafið þetta alltaf komið upp spurningar aðtúða sem þeir eigum að fara í einhver aðra átt og þessar raddir hafa kannski orðið háværari síðastliðin ár út af því að það eru komnir aðrir aðilar á markaði hugbúnaði fyrirtæki, alþjóðleg hugbúnaði fyrirtæki sem eru farin að bjóða upp á ymsar lausnir á þessum markaði. Og þessi umræði hefur átt sér stað núna á golfþingum og segja undanfarin fjögur til sex ár og það var sérstök nefnd skipuð á golfþingi fyrir fjórum árum síðan sem fekk það hlutverk að taka út golf.is annars vegar og bera kerfið saman við önnur alþjóðleg hugbúna eða annan alþjóðlegan hugbúna á þessum markaði. Niðurstaða þeirra nefndar fyrir tveimur árum síðan eftir að hafa kannað hvaða möguleikar væri í bóði var svo að, jú, vissulega það eru aðri möguleikar í bóði en kostnaðurinn við þessa möguleika er svo miklu, miklu meiri heldur en við höfum verið að eyða í golf.is sjálf að það var eiginlega ekki talið þess virði að halda lengra áfram með það, þú veist, kostnaðurinn væri svo mikill. Þannig að stefna var svolítið sett á það að halda golf.is, setja þá aukið fjármagn í þróun kerfisins og uppihald og nýjar lausnir og svo framvegis og framvegis. Og það er svona slóðin sem við höfum verið að feta undanfarin tvö ár. Síðan gerist það að fyrir svona ári síðan, að þá könnum við að tæpa ári síðan, þá könnum við aftur þennan möguleika með golfbox, höfum aftur samband til þess að kanna hvort að það væri eitthvað nýtt að frétta þaðan frá því við tölum við þau síðast. Og þá kom í ljós að verðin á ári við að halda uppi kerfinu eða vera sérst áskrifandi að golfbox fyrir alla golfhreyfinguna var svo miklu, miklu lægri heldur en við höfum fengið upplýsingar um tveimur árum áður. Þannig að golfbox varð allt í einu mjög raunhæf laust á ný. Og í framhaldinu var sett vinna í það og þetta kynntu var formannafundi núna í november og í framhaldinu var okkur falið að hefja viðræður við Goldbox með það að markmiði að hugsanlega ef samningar myndu nást að innleiða kerfið fyrir tímabilið á næsta ári 2020. Og þessi ITNM sem hefur verið starfandi sleitu laust núna í kringum fjögur ár, ef ekki meira, hún er búin að leggja alveg gríðarlega vinnu á sig og hérna mér langar að þakka meðlimum nefndarinnar alveg sérstaklega fyrir mjög óeigingjart starf í því í gegnum árin og mér erum við kynningar á golfingum og formannafundum og golfingum og formannafundum og svo framvegis. En niðurstaðan er svo að við erum komin nokkuð langt með samning sem við ætlum kannski að ræða aðeins betur eftir að Martin hefur lokið sínu erindi þá ætla ég að gera svona aðeins grein fyrir því hvar við stöndum í dag varðandi hugsanlega innleðingu á þessu kerfi. En þessum fundi sem ætla þeir bara að fjalla um kerfið sjálft og Martin er sérfræðingur í því, ætlar að vera með kynningu á kerfinu, hann er ekki hér til þess að svara spurningum um samningin við Goldbox eða að akkur verðin eru svona en ekki hinsein, það er ekki hans þekking á kerfinu, hann er bara til þess að fjalla um virkni kerfisins sjálfs. En við getum hins vegar reynt, ég og aðrir þá í ytjöndar reynt að svara einhverjum öðrum spurningum þegar Martin hefur lokið sínu máli. Þetta er ekki kennsla sem er að fara fram hér, heldur einungis 
sýning á því hvað kerfið hefur upp á að bjóða, fjalla um virknina. Martin ætlar að skipta þessu upp í þrjá hluta, hver og eitt hluti er 40-50 mínútur og við ætlum að taka spurningar að loknum hverjum hluta og hlutarnir skiptast í, það er fyrst ætlar Martin að fjalla um uppsetningu golfklúbs og skráningu félaga, þann hluta kerfisins, svo verðum við með spurningar. Næst er það rástíma kerfið og svo spurningar. Svo tökum við hlé, hátæðismat, klukkan 12.30 og förum yfir á kaffi Easy, sem er hérna í skrifstofubyggingu íþróttasambandsins. Hátæðismat þar og komum svo aftur og þá hefst þriðji hlutin sem fjallar um mótakerfið á golf.is og svo verðum við með spurningar að loknu því til Martins og síðan ætla ég að fara aðeins yfir svona hver næstu skref eru hvað okkur varðar. Hvað varða spurningarnar og áður en ég hleypi Martin að þá erum við að taka þetta upp og þetta er líka í beitni útsendingu á netinu fyrir þá klúbfélaga sem ekki höfðu tök á því að mæta hingað í dag og við munum setja þetta inn á YouTube upptökuna þannig að það geta allir kynnt sér þetta síðar en vegna upptökunar að þá ætla ég að byggja ykkur þegar þið komið með spurningar að bera upp spurningar það er annað hvort þá íslensku eða ensku og ef þið beri spurningunni upp á íslensku þá svona leifi ég mér að þýða hana yfir á ensku til Martin en ég mun endurtaka allar spurningarnar sem þið berið upp út af því, út af hljóðinu. En þá held ég að okkur sé ekki neitt af vandbúnaði og við getum bara gefið Martin orðið. Martin Grönn, thank you for being here with us. It's a pleasure to have you and thank you for taking the time out to come and meet with us and guide us through the wonders of golf box. I've just explained to the audience that you will be answering questions about the functionality of the, uh, of the system and, and uh, you have divided your lecture into three groups and we'll have questions following each, each section, if that is okay. Yep. And, uh, and for the purpose of, of the video, I am going to repeat all the questions that the audience might throw at us or at, or at you. But uh, if, if you're ready to start, then Take it away. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Everything he said, I believe that. I have no idea, but uh, we'll go from there. Uh, I just want to start with saying that I forgot that I'm, I get a little nervous when there's that many people here. So if I sound a little nervous now, um, that's why. And if I start smiling, it's because I learned an old trick about looking at the people in the crowd and then, you know. <laughs> so, so if I just start going like this, you know why. Um, we're already behind because of the technical guys, so um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll try to see if we can uh, catch up uh, so we can uh, reach our breaks and our questions and everything. Um, I have just a, a short presentation on, um, on PowerPoint and then we'll go in and see the, the program. Uh, not, not everything because then we'll be here for many days, um, but, but the, what I found was, uh, what we found was the important stuff to show you. We'll do that uh, in, um, some of it will be in our test system, so there will be a pretty uh, 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 color around our system, and it's just uh, so our, us uh, in Golfbox as testers know that we are on the test system and not on the live system, uh, so we can, uh, so we don't make mistakes when we test, uh, test our system. Um, uh, when we make new stuff. Uh, I will present some stuff on, on the live system. For instance, our app will be from, uh, from, from our live system. So when I make a, a, a score in the system, I will actually adjust my own handicap just because I can. So I'll obviously be better and better and better during the day. Um, so just a quick uh, introduction of Golfbox. Uh, for, for most of you may or may not uh, know us. Um, We've been in uh, the software business for golf since 2003. And uh, in December 2003, we got our first customer, the Golf Union of Norway, who bought the whole system, which we had in a PowerPoint Excel sheet. So uh, they, they were to go live in 2004, is, uh, and that's when I joined this, the company. And from, from getting the customer in 2003, we started building the system in 2004. So a lot of things ha has happened since 2004, uh, almost 15 years. Um, a lot of 
add-ons uh, is, is added to the system, new system has, has arrived, uh, and we always, I guess our, our way of saying this, if we stop having new stuff to develop, we're done as a company. If you can't find new stuff that you want in the system, then we don't have a system because then the, the, the world is not evolving anymore. So it, it's always, there will always be new stuff to develop in, in our system. Just a quick breakdown down of the of the hours. We may be five minutes early, five minutes late uh, uh, of the time. So they're just a, a, a guide. Uh, we may stop before 4.30, we may go to three, depending on how many questions you have. Um, but it's a guideline. Just a little thing about, uh, about Golf Box. We provide our system, our member system, our tournament system, our pro planner system uh, to many different golf unions and uh, um, Scandinavia, Scotland, England, RNA is our tournament customer. They have all the tournaments except the Open and Golf Box. Um, so we have quite some, 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 some good car. E EGA uh, have all the championships in Golf Box. Um, so, so, so 15, 17 plus union, uh, unions do we have uh, as, as customers for Golf Box. Um, and with the club system, we have different setups. In Denmark, it's, uh, the club will come to us and buy the system. In Norway, the union bought the system, so uh, they will all get the system from the union. We're also out in Australia um, with, with our, our, our tournament system and pro planner system. So our most famous system in the world, is, is uh, in the whole world, is our tournament system. Because we have customers like the RNA, um, and, and a lot of, uh, I'll say, third level pro tours, but uh, lately we've been having quite a few uh, ladies European tour events, uh, especially in Australia, running through the golf box uh, system. Um, so we're, we're doing really well. Last year we had more than 80,000 tournaments in golf box, so, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's doing, quite, doing quite well. And just a little fact about me, um, so we don't want to spend too much time on that, because then I just get more nervous. Uh, but I've, as I said, I joined the company uh, in the first year of, of uh, when we started, and I've been in, uh, in the support department, the training so department, and uh, has evolved into being the head of the support department, uh, sales, and the training department. Um, we actually only have three guys in the support department, so uh, I hope that tells you that we do not have that much support, because the system is, is most part self-explanatory. Um, of course, there is a training curve, but once you've gotten the, uh, to know the system, we don't really have much support in, in, um, in, in the system. And just to finish uh, with the numbers again, we'll just leave them here. Actually, I have to go out of this, so uh, I'll come back to this if I need to, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll go into to the program. And just as I, as I told you, we are actually doing this in our test system. Uh, we do have a few new, th new things uh, up for testing uh, that I haven't tested. So should I run into any areas, it's, it is our test system. Um, I don't think there is any areas uh, right now, but just so I'm, uh, you know, uh, I said it already. Uh, and you can see it's the test system because it's got this pretty uh, orange uh, salmon color uh, on the sides. So right now I'm logged into the to the member system as an administrator. This is this is the view that that you see. Uh, this is the front page of, of Golf Box. It's an overview page. You have um, uh, it in English in a minute. Um, you have something about what the club can do. The the data for the club. Uh, you can have a calendar function in Golf Box where you can have all your um, maybe there's a rule seminar. Maybe there's a uh, wine tasting, maybe basically a, a, a function calendar where you can list everything that goes on in the club. Um, there's a message center where you can message the players. The, uh, when we make something new, we'll send out a message to all the administrators saying, we created this new thing, here's a guide if, if a guide is needed. Sometimes it's just, we created new, this new thing, click there to, to use it. Uh, and if a guide is, is, uh, is, is needed, then there will be a link to the guide in our, in our help system and you will be able to see what, what the new, new stuff is. We have a news function where you can send out stuff about the course, uh, 
Um, maybe you are, you are uh, poking holes in the greens or maybe the first fairway is underwater or whatever. Uh, there's a new bullet bulletin board as well for, for, for the club if they want to use it. Um, and the reason we have these is, is that golf box for the player is kind of a, a portal. Uh, it, they c it can be used for, for the club's message boards, it can be used for the calendar, it can be used for the tea time booking tournaments. So they have this little of their own world in, 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 the, in the golf box player system. You can uh, do all the financials in, in, in the system. Um, we have uh, from day one said that we do not want to be an economy system because we know that there are other people who are better than that, uh, better than us at that. So, um, so we, what we've done is in Golfbox, you can prepare all the financials, who get charged for a membership of this kind, who get charged for a membership of this kind. And then we basically leave, leaves it up to the, to the golf clubs to, to decide which member uh, or economy system they're, they're speaking with, because then they can't tell us, uh, we need this or we need this. You can simply buy the best system and integrate it with Golfbox, and then uh, you can do all your financials that way. We have a locker system where you can, uh, if you have lockers for all the bags, uh, maybe the trolleys uh, has electricity and, and can be charged. All this can be controlled in, in Golfbox and in our locker system. There's an S SMS text messaging system where you can send out players uh, or text messages to, to players. Um, I don't know how much it's used because there is a fee for it for text message and the emails are free, so most clubs will use the emails. But but there is an option to have the the um, the emails uh, or text messages. We have what we call a marketing uh, marketing module. Um, when I book a tea time in a club that has the marketing module. I will get an email saying thank you for booking uh, at, at this golf club. When you come to the club, depending on how, how much they write to me, uh, go into the reception and check in or whatever information they want me to have. I get this message uh, as soon as I, um, I click on the, on the uh, book the tea time. And once I get to the club, I play, I confirm my tea time, I'll get another email from the club 24 hours later where you can ask maybe if I wanted to fill out a questionnaire, if did we do something good, bad, and so forth. Um, and in one of these mails, they can sign up to your newsletter if they want to, because um, they have to be have uh, consent for, for, the, uh, for the newsletters to, to, for you to actually get the emails. The most important part in our system is what we call the right system. You can have as many administrators in, in, in the system um, as that you want, and you can give them as many rights as you want. So in my club, we have, I think, about 70 administrators where 60 of those are only tournament administrators. So it's the senior club, the junior club, the elite club, the men's club, the ladies club, and all who's having uh, tournaments in the system, they have all rights uh, to just tournaments. Uh, then the administrators in, in the... Uh, yeah. um, in the club, they will have maybe different roles. Maybe there's a, a, just a guy who's in charge of tea time booking and will just have the rights for tea time booking. Maybe there's a, 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 an administrator that comes in and only does the financials. They will just have access to the financials. So, so we have a very powerful administration um, rights system where we can simply, for all our different modules. We can go in and say, you can get rights to this, 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 and this. Or the, the main the super administrators, they get rights for everything. Um, so to see this guy, he only has the rights for tournaments. And the, at least in Denmark, it's used a lot to, to have help by volunteers. Otherwise, uh, the member fees uh, will be extremely high. Um, and I'll say in Denmark uh, compared to other countries. I don't even know your rates here, but in Denmark, it, I would say they're fairly cheap when I compare them to England or, or the States or, or uh, France. Uh, then we're doing pretty good still in, in Denmark. It's not too expensive to play golf yet. Um, and this is m mostly due to all the volunteers in, in the work. For the same reason, we actually have a function that where, where we can register who's volunteering for us, who's helping us do all this, who's in the, in the handicap, uh, um, handicap group, who's in the course group, who's in the IT group, who's in 
whatever volunteer groups we have, you can register all this work uh, in the system as well. Uh, there's not much fun in this, uh, in, the, in, in this, the club part. It's, it's, it is just mostly information. You go there every once in a while, you don't use it uh, as much. Uh, what you really use is the member system and the resources. So everything that has to do with creating members, looking up members, changing member data, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the important, uh, important part. And the first page you always get to is, is the search page when you go into the members area. You can search on members, you can, you can put in a member number, um, and it will give you the member information. You can search on multiple members uh, by just saying, I want everyone from 1 to 100. You get all who's within this uh, number range, uh, and you can do something with these members. You can also, if you have a group of 10, play, uh, 10 members you want to do, you can, you can search in, in different ways. So you can, that was only two. Uh, so you can, um, you can work with them in, in different ways uh, to do whatever you need to do with the members. If I click on a member, I'll first get an overview of, of, um, of, uh, of the information that we have in here. And it's, it's divided up into different areas uh, of, uh, there's personal information, there's membership information, there's contact information. A very powerful thing in, in, in Golfbox is the groups. We can put people into different groups. Um, we have three kinds of group, groups. We have what we call the invoice groups, and that's what category are you in in the club? Are you a senior? Are you a junior? W what membership do you have? Um, and you can only be in one membership group, uh, one invoice group, because I'm either a senior or I'm a junior or I'm in a, a, a weekday member or weekend member or green fee member. I can't be a uh, full-time member and green fee member at the same time. It wouldn't make any sense. Then we have some other groups where we call them static groups, and they can be used for anything that the club wants to use them for. Um, in, 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 in this system here that we had to, uh, uh, this is actually at, on my test system, it's actually my own club uh, in Silkeborg that we, we just changed the name for. Um, so, so this guy here, he was uh, part of the group that was uh, helping with uh, expanding from 18 holes to 27 holes. So one of his groups was the course expansion group. Uh, that means they could easily just pick this group of those 20 people or how many there were in the group and email them or uh, uh, contact them in, in any other way that they wanted to do. We have, uh, we can set up family relations so you can see who's, uh, who you're in, uh, related to. And this is, in Denmark at least, it's mainly used for the golf magazine. I don't know if you have uh, still a paper uh, magazine. Um, so in Denmark they're trying not to send out five magazines to a family. Um, and they just want to send one out to the family. So we put up relations and only the, the head of the family will get the, uh, um, will get the magazine and, and the rest will be sorted. From, from the Danish Golf Union. Um, and like in the real world, in, in Silkeborg, they actually put the, the wives as the head of the family because they figured that's the way it is in the real world, so why shouldn't it be in the golf system? <coughs> There's a, an overview of if you have a, a golf cart, a, a, a union cart, you can order them in the system and they will go into your uh, member card system. Um, and an important one on the members is, of course, the handicap, the, score, uh, the scoring archive. So they can, uh, they can see um, what are the players' handicap, what scores do they have, and they can go directly from, from the overview here into the, uh, into the score archive. They can see if they have any lockers, they can see if they have uh, any financials uh, in here as well, and they can see if they got any letters written to them. So all this is, is what you can see in, in the overview window. And if I click into one of the areas, uh, it's, it's basically where they, the member, all the member information is. There is a, there's six tabs in a member. There's the personal information, such as name, birth date, um, when, did they, uh, when did they join the club, and, and uh, email, uh, mobile number, and e a little message box if you have some special agreement with the club, maybe. Um, you put in he's a board member or, or whatever, just a, just a message information. 
relations, uh, as I said, was uh, is just just a way to to say who's in family together. Contact information can be used in different ways. There can be invoice information. There can be private information. There can be holiday information. Um, so you can have more than one address, and if you have that, you can split up uh, if it's a mailing address or if it's an invoice address. Not many clubs in Denmark are using what we call snail mail anymore. They are informing everyone on email. Um, and and the, the, the email system in Golfbox uh, what we c uh, will do two things. It will send out an email, and because you, we always know that we don't know if the email is correct, some, maybe they put in a wrong email, maybe there's something wrong with the mail server or whatever. Uh, then we also always send the mail in a message in Golfbox. So they will always receive either the email, but always the, the message in Golfbox. So we, you as a club can be certain that somehow they did get the message um, in, in the system. Uh, it can, you can use and, and get out labels if you want to snail mail your members, but uh, as I said, not many. I don't know if the, the post uh, companies here in Denmark, they're very expensive now and they're really, really slow. Uh, I don't know if it's the same here. The financial part of a member is, um, not many is doing that anymore, but you can actually set up if a, a head of the family should pay for, for the member. So in this case, the member will pay for himself uh, and his, this, the, the accountant system in this uh, club here will only allow the members to pay. They can't have any family heads pay for them. So they need to get all the debitors over into the economy system. So they're all in charge of themselves. But some other uh, economy systems, you can actually merge the, the invoices. So, so the family head will get three invoices and the rest of the family will not get any invoices. Um, there's a history of all they paid and everything, uh, and you can make uh, uh, invoices just for this one member on the finances page as well. In the group page, group tab is you can you can change what what kind of member, what kind of uh, what kind of fee should they pay. Um, and then in my club, we have uh, actually now we have I can't remember how many different memberships. Uh, um, but it's a lot, uh, and some of them will not give you a full plane ride, some will give you half a plane ride, some will allow you just to use the uh, driving range and, and the fitness center, and some will allow you to play nine holes, and some will just allow you to play on one of our courses. Uh, it's a nightmare, but, <laughs> but um, they control them all with, with the invoice groups, um, so they always know which, which members will get which fee in the system. And then they have a lot of groups as well in here that, uh, that, they, that they made so they can put uh, a label on, on some of their uh, members. We have a lot of uh, um, volunteers that are, what do you call, uh, the, the guys on the course helping out, asking how is everyone, trying to keep the speed up, uh, marshals, I think they're called, um, and, and they, um, to, to help get out information, well, they have a group that's called marshals in here, uh, banner control in Danish. Uh, and they can add this to the to the groups as well. And the last the last part of of, of the uh, of the some of it may be used, some of it may not be used. You can receive ma magazines, uh, uh, you can get lockers, and you can see see other information on here. And you can see if they uh, have a profile picture as well. Uh, not many people are using it, but it's actually possible to upload a picture and. And then they can see who they are when when they get into the to the to the club. And it can be used if they have a picture. It can be used for tournaments as well. Uh, yeah. In the member section, there is a lot of um, a lot of a lot of uh, areas where where the most important one is to uh, create new member. You simply search for a number uh, that you want to add them. You can say, you can say, can I get the first available? If you are filling out the holes in your golf club, uh, if, a, if a guy uh, leaves the club and he has number one, if it becomes available again, then you can uh, just give him uh, the first one. Or as what we like to say is when, when you use a, 
a uh, economy system where they have a de uh, debitor number, you don't really want to reuse the numbers because uh, if you the guy with member number one he owns uh, he owed the club a lot of money and you get a new guy in with uh, number one and he goes into the economy system and all all of a sudden it looks like the new guy is owing the club a lot of money. Uh, so you have different different ways of, of searching for member numbers. You can find the first one. The next in line will be if you have a thousand members, then the next one will be a thousand and one, and you can just continue up like that. Some clubs actually uh, in Denmark, there's uh, uh, the oldest golf club in Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen Golf Clubs. They sell their member numbers between one and ten because they're very prestigious. And in in that club, it's the only club uh, we have that has a waiting list still. Uh, and they only get new members when someone dies, because no one leaves the club once you get in. So if a member between one and ten dies, then they sell it on an auction. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and they, they actually do this, and they get uh, the money for the juniors. Uh, so it's, it's, it's And I think they got like um, 10,000 kroners for number one, uh, directly to the juniors. Uh, so it's, it's a good deal. Uh, but you can get different ways. It looks up the number, and in, in this case, it's a very large number because it's our test system. So we um, we created member numbers with a large system. So I'll just uh, take the first available. Looks much better. So 32 is my first available. And when I create a new member, I'm simply taking through the same guide as I just showed you before. You have to fill out the information um, uh, on each tab. First, the profile page, so I'm not going to do that. It's going to take five minutes, and we don't really need to, to see that as well. Fill out if there's any relations, if there's any uh, contact information, financial. If, if you do have family relations, uh, one, of the, one other reason that is there is that you can steal the address. Uh, if, if uh, let's say, the a father is already in a, in a club and the son joins, you put in the relationship and you just click get their address, uh, and they will have the same address. Um, I think it's going to be different here. I think you have your own system that has all that. So it will get it from your social, what's it called? Social security number? Yeah, yeah so I think your address is hooked up to that. Then, then your window might look a little different when we get this far. Um, yes. Waiting lists. Is there any golf clubs in, in Iceland with waiting lists? You wish? No? Yes, so there is an option to create waiting lists um, as well. They will not be created as, as real members. They will be created with all the data in there. And, um, and once, uh, once they are accepted into the club, you can go into the, to the member. That's, uh, let's say that they're actually following the rules and it's number one on the waiting list that gets accepted. You can go directly into the guy on the waiting list and find the number for him and then he's created in the system. So, so um, it's possible to have the list in here. The Copenhagen Club had more than a thousand members uh, on their waiting lists uh, at one point um, because people would just sign up and not leave the waiting list, uh, even though they joined other clubs in, in Copenhagen. Then they, f they decided we'll charge them 50 kroners a year just to stay on the waiting list. And now I think they have 200. <laughs> people didn't want to pay 50 kroners. We have, the, we have an option in the member list to see uh, all the former members uh, in, in, in the list. Uh, we can even go a layer deeper. It's called the deleted members uh, in the list. And with the GDPR, uh, the most hated word in IT at the moment, GDPR, uh, we will add a, a, an automatic function to delete uh, players that, ha that has been uh, non-members after X amount of year. And I think it will be some kind of way the, w the union says well we're allowed to have data due to financials due to uh, handicaps and so forth for five or uh, they, they actually have they actually get to have them for quite a while uh, when you are a part of, of, a, of a, a union uh, a sports union you can you can keep data longer than you can in other uh, GDPR uh, things um, so so but there will be an, a function just to say okay everything that's more than five years old Let's get rid of them. Um, otherwise, you can also, if a guy comes in and say, I want to be completely deleted from your club, you can go in and, and do that as well. 
We can administer all the groups. The groups are, as I said earlier, a very strong uh, thing in, in, in Golfbox because in the search area, we can also search for all these different groups. Instead of just searching for numbers, there's, I'm certain there's also a few of you out here that knows this guy not by name, but by number. Uh, so, so they can obviously always use the number function, but most of us will say, well, I need to find the juniors, or I need to find the, the, the uh, marshals, or I need to have whatever uh, part of this group. I don't know really who's in it, I just need to, to find them. Um, so, so all these groups you can create uh, as, as many as you want uh, yourself, both the invoice groups and the static groups. We have a last thing we call the dynamic groups, and that's th they are system-generated groups. So there will be men, women, uh, active, uh, uh, active members, um, maybe uh, in handicap you have, uh, what do you call it in, in Iceland? And we have, um, we call it uh, EGA handicap uh, or just handicap. So in Norway it's tournament handicap, EGA tournament handicap or just handicap. Um, so you can also search for everyone with EGA handicap or everyone without EGA handicap. It's all in the dynamic group. Once I haven't played all my rounds uh, of the year, I will go into the uh, handicap and not the EGA handicap. If I change my gender, I will go into the women. I probably won't do that this time, but uh, it happens. Um, what else do we have in here? Not much else here. I'll, um, how, how do you do in, in Iceland with uh, when players uh, play the round of golf and they have to hand in their scorecards? Is it in some clubs in Denmark for the last, uh, well, we, we, we are getting a lot better to it, but five years ago, three years ago, there would be a, a mailbox in, in the clubhouse and when you play the round of golf, you come in and you put your scorecard in the mailbox. Then you have a volunteer sitting entering all the scores. It was crazy. And some clubs in Denmark still do that. Even though they have all the options of the, the players can do it uh, in golf box on the web, uh, on, on the app they can do it. And, and some people just like to have that uh, special volunteer that done it for 15 years, he can still do it. So, so they do that. So the report score scoring function in, uh, in, in the admin system will only be used for you mostly to to the special cases, the guy who uh, says, uh, comes into the handicap uh, uh, um, group and say, I, uh, I think my handicap is too high uh, or too low. No one says it's too high, uh, too low. Uh, can, we get, can I get it adjusted? And you can do special adjustments if you find evidence that his handicap really is too low um, or too high. But, but you can do the report scores as well if, if um, For some reason, I can't remember my own number now. No. Oh, he's passive. All the way around. So you can do the same thing as the players. If you have some members, let's say you do have some IT, um, what do you call them, non-IT people. You do have, it, it, it does happen. Uh, in, in Denmark, there is actually uh, a few members without an email and even without a cell phone. So, so, and they, s they do not have a computer either. So, so it is possible for the, for the admins to go in and record the scores. And um, they pick the date, they pick the club they played, and uh, they, picked, they picked the, uh, the course they played on. Um, and they can choose just to enter the points uh, or they can enter the whole scores uh, one by one by just um, entering them on the system and then they save it. They can add a, a marker uh, as well. When an admin adds a marker, the marker doesn't have to approve it uh, because he already signed the scorecard, so, so he doesn't have to approve it. If I go into Golfbox as a player, enter my score and I, I enter one of you as a marker, you will have to go in and approve my score before it's counting. I'll show you that uh, later. Um, so, so they can enter the scores for each player and they can also go in and say, well, I want to do a manual adjustment of, of the players because uh, I have actually seen his last five scorecards and he didn't make more than 18 points per round. So um, 
we have this guy in, in, in the golf club um, and I can actually go in and, and, and say, well, he hasn't really performed to his plus 2.9 lately because you have a neck issue. Uh, so I'll just do a manual adjustment uh, uh, for him and, and say he's a 1 plus 9 instead. This is, uh, he's actually, his status will, will be nice and say he's got an active handicap status as well. So we can change that as well uh, in the system. But otherwise, this will be done automatically according to your EGA rules. How many scores do you have to have in the system? Um, and l let's see if not that doesn't change in 2020 with the new World Handicap System. Uh, I think the yearly handicap adjustments will stop uh, because you will just... Uh, um, get your, your average of, of the handicap. But there may, there may still be an a active, uh, non-active uh, handicap uh, depending on how many scores you have in the system. I haven't seen the final, uh, final uh, rules yet. Um, the administrator can also uh, see if there's any scores that are waiting for confirmations from the marker. Um, in a few cases, let's say you play with a, a person who's not in golf box and doesn't have a golf box account. Well, he can't go in and approve his scores. Um, so so you, can set, you can set the score as the marker is not in golf box. And then the score will come to the club uh, for, for approval. Um, and you can see in, 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 in here, and obviously there has to be some procedure to, do they have to hand in the scorecard when this happens or, or do you just approve them because you trust them, uh, which, which most clubs does. Some people, some players are, again, uh, maybe not too IT minded, so, so they forget to, uh, even though they get an email, you have a score waiting for your approval, uh, please go in and approve it. They forget this sometimes, so they, um, they, will, uh, they will just leave it there and the, the marker will never approve the scores. Well, then you can go in and decide what happens to the scores that are not, uh, that hasn't been approved by the markers. Uh, and you can approve them or you can delete them depending on, on what, your, what the handicap group's uh, opinions of those are. Um, for right now, there's also an annual handicap review center where, where, all the, uh, where, all the, uh, where you can see all the um, an, uh, annual handicap reviews. Again, I think this will go away when, when you start using a uh, golf box because I think uh, with the, with the, there'll be other ways to do this in, in, the, in, the, in the handicap um, in the new system. All right. I think there was something about the reports as well in here. Yeah, so we also have the member areas and the reports area that kind of go together. Uh, my best report is the one where I get to des decide uh, everything I want out in the report and not uh, the predefined re reports that are in the system. So if I make a member search, let's say I want to search on all the, um, all the men, uh, all the females, because I have a, 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 a ladies tournament I would like to inform them on, I'll, I'll select the female group and I'll just search on that. If I want to make a report where I choose what, what's in this re report, well, then I can um, go in and export all the details of, of this, uh, of this uh, search I just did. So I have 16, 50, 615 uh, females here, and I can now choose and make my own report in, in the system. So I, can, I want first name, email, last name, email, and this is it, because I want to email these people uh, that there's this uh, pink cup uh, tournament uh, against uh, breast cancer that they should join. So, but there's all the, uh, all the uh, things in, in the member system that you can extract uh, from the database. It's all in here and you can decide and, and, and uh, create your own uh, reports for this. We do also have uh, so a number of set, uh, set um, reports that are quite the same uh, everywhere. We have a handicap list, some clubs actually still uh, print out a handicap list and put on the clubhouse and have 28 pages of uh, trees hanging on the wall. Um, so, so these reports are in here. You can do some, uh, you can check out a list of all the scores. Uh, maybe you want to see how many scores were in the system for, for August. Um, you can print labels for the, the, the members. Um, 
you can see different statistics. How many do I have of the passive uh, full-time members uh, and all this? Different reports that are in instantly created. Uh, how are they compared in my handicap groups and, <laughs> and in my age groups as well? So these are some predefined reports that you really can't do anything about except get out in either Excel or Word. Uh, and in the member, when you export it here, you can decide exactly what you want uh, and it exports it to Excel. And then you can play with, with all the data that you want. I am I actually think I caught up with, uh, with the time. So we do have time for some questions about the first part here, or we can go through the next part and to take more questions. Einhverja spurningar til Martin á þessu stigi? Gjörðu vel. Já. Okay, for the purpose of the video and the uh, and the uh, the audio, uh, I'm going to repeat the questions in in, in English. Uh, and the question is, if we implement the system, uh, will it be will the language be in English or would it be a, have an English an Icelandic language option? I think you should translate it to Icelandic, but it's it's up to them. The question is, can the uh, the uh, the, mem the the member section that we have with our current system can that be imported into Golfbox? No, you'll have to create everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm I'm certain with the plan will be to import the members uh, with as much information that you have that we can that that matches our system. Mm -hmm. So you will only have to uh, create new members. Okay. Það er bera hann upp aftur? Nei. Nei. Sæmundur varst þú? It will be implemented. Excuse me, I, I have to... Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, the, the question is, uh, if, if there is a section for what we call in Iceland Kennetala, social, social security number, is that a uh, is is that a part of the uh, the setup with the membership in golf box? It will be a part of the setup, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions, maybe. First, the dual membership, and secondly, if it's a bit of a club-oriented setup, will there be a, a club union administration also that has a so global administration? Okay. The the question is uh, is do you have a possibility of a dual membership? Question number one, and question number two, uh, will there be a Golf Union of Iceland administration access or within the or system? Or, 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 you know, overview or, you know, doing things like pretty much the same we have today, where you have our system, where everything comes from this side, and uh, this is pretty much a club-oriented administration. So will there also be a, a Golf Union administration? Yeah, will the, will the Golf Union have access uh, as, a, as a member of the system as well? <coughs> yes, supervisor. Okay. That I don't know. Uh, those part of the deal, I, I don't know if you're talking about the mem uh, or the union database uh, where all the data go into or... So, so a, a, a layer above everything where all the data go out into. I think that's part of the, the solution as well, as far as I know. Okay, but, well I, but I, I haven't seen uh, all those, uh, but I think that's part of your what you're talking about as well. And the first question, dual membership? Uh, with, with the social security number, there will be an option to uh, handle the, the uh, how exactly it's going to look. Uh, in Norway, we have, a, a, it's called the Change Club. There's a button. If they have three memberships, there's a button, say Change Club, and you go into that other club, uh, then you're a member. So it's the same login because you have the social login uh, and then you, you can control the different uh, memberships. Uh, how technically it's going to look right now, I'm not sure, uh, but there will be an option, uh, as far as I'm aware, to handle those uh, with one, log one login. 
Thank you. Hvernig fleiri spurningar? Já, Hulda, gerðu svo vel. Is the one you choose. Okay, so it's Manuel. Yes, it's, it's, it's the one you choose. So the, the question was, uh, who is head of the family? A highly <laughs> debatable question to be sorted out within each household. But <laughs> as far as the golf box system is concerned, you will it will be man you, you can choose. Yes. The, the head of the family, I assume, will choose. And, and there is another term, uh, head of the family is maybe not the right one. Um, but it's, you know, man will not like that and the woman will say well i am the head so it's so you can depending on each family you can decide <coughs> yeah and if you already have this in in the, in the old system it will be uh, it, it will be should be part of the of the conversion to the new system and they should the existing one should be in place uh, as it is right now okay thank you any other questions? Uh, you, uh, for what quiz you do the uh, financial uh, part? Uh, can the, the system uh, handle uh, membership fees and, and, and green fees, etc.? The, the question is whether the system can handle uh, membership and green fees. Yes, and yes, it can handle all the. Uh, if you just have the, s the system, it can handle all the all the work behind the scene. Who, who's, what groups are paying what? Uh, and if uh, there's an integration to a financial si financial system, it will be transferred to this financial system, who will then send out the invoices. Uh, and as for card to green fees, yes, uh, there's uh, online options to pay. I don't know if you have a, 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 a big Icelandic uh, payment provider for online payments. Um, we'll we'll do integration with the with the ones that you say we have to do integrations with, and then you can decide whether or not the green fee players have to pay when they book, or whether they can choose. But I will go into that uh, a little later. And, and there will be uh, an interaction with the credit card companies. Yes. Yeah. So that so in Denmark it's called DIP, Danish uh, Internet Payment System, um, and and it's like when you buy on any web shop. So your green fee is your merchandise. You pick uh, you pick uh, the date and time, and if you have differentiated green fees, well then you can see uh, what the price is. You click on the green fee, you say pay now, and you paid for it. So when working with like the financial system as a separate um, software, what's the primary software you use? Like when integrating all like the ACS or ACI services between the two systems, would you? Uh, the way it works with the w with the current financial systems is that uh, all the member data will be updated in the financial system once we transfer uh, all the all the invoicing information. So so uh, let's say you have a membership, the yearly membership, uh, and at the same time when you transfer this to the invoice system, all the addresses, emails, and everything will be updated in the invoice system if the integration is made correctly. And which, which system will be the primary one? Because there's always the golf system. Uh, there's not there's not a, a return uh, there's there's from golf box to the invoice system so the, the the golf box is the main golf system with all the data so basically exp uh, exporting all the current data will have to be through golf stock is today or do you have it correct because like you always have difference between two systems you get that no, no. Well, the qu the question in hand is what how how the f uh, the uh, the invoice system that each club might have, how that um, talks to golf box and and what system is superior in in uh all integration can of course be made the way uh, the way we agree to but but in all the in all the current systems we have right now golf box is the master, and the economy gets the data from the master, yeah, through APIs. Well. Is it new 
þetta var byrjað um bara spila Íslandi. Það var ekki góð stað að fá að fara hann, það er ekki. Já, en þau samt spara mér þá ómakið af því að vera að þýða þetta, því að þau eru kannski miklu betri í ensku en ég. Já, viltu að ég byrja upp þessa spurningu? Inside joke, on your expense. You have to say Martin just in the middle of your sentence. Óli. Okay, so the question. Okay, so the question is, do the do the golf clubs in Iceland need to have a a uh, common uh, invoice system, or can we select any system invoice system w we want? Would and if so, if we have you know 10, 20 different systems. How will that work with golf box? Do we need to, you know, program a connection between golf box and 20 different invoice systems? Of, co of course, we, we would prefer that you had that you could decide on the ones that you really like, and we only have to make a few integrations. But we actually right now have a, an API uh, for the invoicing that uh, if if uh, if they're online or if they can work with APIs. It, it shouldn't really matter because we don't have to do the work in that connection because it will be the, the financial provider that will have to implement the work from the API. Uh, but ob obviously it will be easier if we start up with one, two or three. I don't know how many, if you use 20 different already uh, or if there's a main player in, in Denmark, there's a, yeah, in Denmark there's a big one called uh, Economic or Visma uh, and, and, uh, and Microsoft, of course, uh, Navision is the other one. And we have integrations with them, uh, and they're done in two different ways. And in Norway, we have four different integrations, I think. Uh, and, and the latest integration we made in Finland is a strictly API. So you can say, I just want to have uh, whatever system, they can speak to this API, and they, they will just get the data, and they will implement it into their system. So I guess the answer is, is still open. It, it, it re it's really... Um, it's, it's, it's really something that comes down to what, what the agreement will be to start with, and it can always be expanded. So if you find out that the ones that you have right now is actually not the best, and you say, well, I've got already 15 clubs that wants to use this one, well, then that's a better integration. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. The question is, uh, when a member has actually paid their membership fee through the, uh, the invoice system, will, tho will these information be uploaded into Golfbox so, you, so the administrator at the club can see, okay, now this is an active member? If we do the, if we do the integration correct, then there's an import back to the, uh, the, way, um, the way I think eight of our integration works is if we click on, on the financial button in Golfbox, it will go directly to the financial system and grab the, uh, the statement. So you see, in Golfbox, you're not, you won't see, it, it's not really Golfbox, it's just looking up in the financial system when we do it right. That's the way, and I think that will be the way to do it. So would my member be uh, able to kind of manage his payment from Golfbox, for example, Currently not. Sorry. The, oh, the, sorry. The, the question is, uh, if an individual member can actually go into Golfbox and make adjustments to his payment scheme. And that's, uh, I, said, uh, I would say again, currently not, but we do have a payment, uh, an integration in Norway where, where they can choose how they will pay, but, but it's not whether they pay with credit card, it's whether how they receive the, uh, the invoice. So, so it can all be be built, uh, but right now it's not, it's not in Golfbox the payment uh, method is, but it can easily be something that's in there on your profile and then you send it on to the, when you transfer. So, so that can be built as well. 
fleiri spurningar? Já, gerðu svo vel. Uh, hvaða? Ok, uh, do you have a sample with you uh, reflecting or displaying the IPE? Uh, the, the API? Yeah, API. Uh, not with me, no. I will have to, uh, Carsten will have to provide this. Ef það er ekki fleiri spurningar varandi þennan hluta, þá höldum við bara áfram. I think there are no more questions on this section, so, so please continue. Uh, Is it uh, to read it? We, we don't break now. Was that the, do you want a coffee break? S All right, okay. Let's seven, seven, seven minutes, because that's how long it takes to smoke a cigarette. Seven minute coffee break.
Ja. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please, we, uh, we have to keep up the pace of play uh, in order to uh, get to the, uh, the most important part of playing golf, and that is the lunch. Exactly. So uh, let's please continue, and, and Martin, you will go on to chapter two. Yeah. I will just, uh, for this, I will actually start in the in the players uh, module, just to show you a little bit about what the player uh, sees and gets uh, from Golf Box. Um, and and the, the player profile in Golf Box is his own little um, universe. Uh, depending on how uh, well the club is, is, is using the system, this can be his uh, portal for all the information he needs about golf. Um, some clubs use, for instance, the news and, and the calendar. They use that a lot. Some other clubs, they have it on their website, so they don't use it in Golf Box. It, it varies from club to club, but uh, um, I have all the information when I'm in the system as, as a player. I have, uh, I have my, my front page, which is an overview of all the tee times uh, and lessons uh, and tournaments I've booked in, in, uh, and ha I have in the future. Um, there's some advertising for our pro planners, if they, if pro trainers, uh, if they use our system, that you can see all the pros and book them directly here. You can see all the messages from, from the club. Um, what players will get most messages from is uh, tea time booking. When they book a tea time, when they, when someone is added to the tea time, when it's deleted, uh, those, they will always get a message from that. The players can then uh, choose if they want an email for that as well, and they can also choose if they want a text message for that as well. The emails are free, the, the text message that the players pay for, uh, or if you as a club want to provide a service, you can actually use the text function and say, we want to pay for the members to get a, a text message every time someone books a tea time. Not many does that in Denmark, uh, <laughs> but some club uh, would like to offer that service. Um, so so it's, it's a, a, a golf box portal where they can do everything. And, and what they do most, uh, without a doubt, is the tee time booking and the tournaments. So in the tee time booking, you're always uh, on, on your own club to start with. So you can see the, the standard course of your club. And if the club has more than one course that they can book, or maybe you book something else through the system. Uh, some club has, uh, in my club, we have um, uh, five indoor, actually we have eight now, uh, indoor mats in, in, in with our fitness center and they also so they set it up so you can you can uh, I haven't done this on, on the test but in, in real life I can book the mats for training indoors as well if I want to do that uh, or it could be a simulator or uh, I guess you may actually have a lot of simulators here in the winter or you should have if you don't have it already that's just a business idea I throw out there um, so it will always take me to, to, to my, my, member, my member page, uh, my mem club's page. And um, you can see the different uh, prices. Now, in, in the winter time here, my club has the same price all year round, uh, or at least uh, in the winter time. But the prices can be differen differentiated with what we call, uh, it's not really yield management, but you know, when you book a hotel or a flight, the prices can go up and down depending on, on how busy the, it is. Uh, we made something similar to yield management where you can have up to five different prices a day. So let's say Saturday morning in Denmark from 6 in the morning to 12. That's the most important member time, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's probably the same here, uh, if I were to guess. And some clubs will say, we want to keep these, uh, these clubs for uh, these uh, times for the members. So we'll uh, raise the green fee price. So no one wants to play. In Denmark this year, we'll see, uh, we'll see more clubs actually 
they're, f they're starting to figure out what it means because they, instead of saying no one can play uh, in those times, then they say, okay, well, we'll double the green fee in those hours. So if they want to play, that's fine, but we'll get double the, the amount of money. And if um, uh, some clubs will also say, if I bring a member or if a member brings a guest, they will play at m pay maybe a reduced green fee or maybe just a normal green fee. But uh, you have all these options to controlling where you want the green fee players to come in uh, just by raising or lowering the prices. Um, so I can easily see that as, as, a, as a player. I mean, for me right now, it doesn't matter because I don't play a green fee, but I know already if I were to bring a guest, what would the price be? Um, so if I were to play tomorrow morning in, in Silkeborg, I have to go a little later because, uh, because uh, I have to fly home tomorrow and I won't be there until f I can be there around three maybe. So, so if, I, if I really hurry and drive fast from Copenhagen, I can get a tea time at, at, at three o'clock. For me as a player, I can, um, I can search for other players as well. If I'm bringing someone, I can just book it for me. That's fine. Everyone else can, can join me. But if I want to add someone else to, to the tea time, I can uh, search for them either by number or by, by name. Or if I have something, uh, we have something called favorites where I actually go in and, and uh, like f Facebook friends, uh, the ones I play with the most, I put on my favorite list because then I can easily just uh, click on my favorite and I get up my friends uh, that I play with a lot and I can just book them uh, in the system. Oh, so he's, that was an old membership. Let's take another one. Oh, they're all old. They're old. They all quit me. Let's try this one. So in, in the test system right now, we also set up, so, so we have internet payment in, in, in the test club, uh, but this club decided I don't have to pay if I don't want to right now. I can, I can, I can pay for my green fee uh, player if I want to. The way the system works, if you have uh, member rebates for guests, uh, say you can, you can bring a guest and he will get a discount. Then. Uh, the way we, we set the system up is the, the member has to pay for the guest. That way you can't just go in and add a member and then get the discount so, and then delete the member afterwards. So, so, so guest uh, uh, rebates can be done, but it has to be paid for by the, uh, by the member. That way we're sure that there's no cheating in, in, the, uh, in, in, in those. There's also options to put up, um, to, to put a, a prepayment discount if, if you say, well, we would like to have green fee players to, players to pay right away. I don't know if golfers in Iceland are the same as in Denmark. This is a thing that they're very afraid to do in Denmark because golfers, you know, they can cancel if it's going to look like it's going to rain. You know, or there's a black cloud, then they don't want to play. So, so not a lot of clubs has uh, yet to uh, force some green fee players to pay because they're so afraid that they won't get any, any green fee players. If you go to England, you can't book a tea time without having to pay. If you go to the States, you have to pay to book a tea time. In Scandinavia, we're like, oh, but, but we can't really, uh, we can't off the, the member he wants to maybe not play if it rains and he wants to cancel five minutes before his tea time. So we're very afraid of that. I don't know if it's the same here in, in Iceland, but in Denmark, it's very, so, so, so we have the option. You can pay in the club. Um, and you can also pay right now, and if I if I taken the other one, I would actually been uh, been taken into the to the internet payment service. We added an option that the players they can be more social. If they if now we're just two, if I want someone else uh, to join me, but I don't really know if they can, I can share my tea time on Facebook. I, look, I got available tea times, or I can send out an email to to my friends on on the list. I can't send out an email to everyone in the club because I'm not friends with them, but my friends, uh, I can send out an email to. And this, of course, is something they, they can choose not to have. They can, they, it's just because I, I, I have the option still. So now I have a, a tea time in the system, and uh, if I go back to my front page, it will actually be up here on the, the top. I'm, I'm ready to play tomorrow with, uh, with Paul from, from Hamel. So. The players have other options, of course. They can uh, go to other clubs. So all uh, 
clubs in a country is listed here. So you would have uh, a booking uh, portal of all 67. How many has tea time bookings anyway? So, so whatever clubs that has tea time booking, they will be in the list here and they can be selected and you can go play uh, a book, book with them. Um, I don't know how many travels to Iceland from the Scandinavian countries to play golf. Um, in, in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, we travel a, a little bit more, but I'm thinking you will be part of this Scandinavian uh, uh, joint uh, tea time booking that we have, where I can actually go in and choose to book in another country, because we, we speak with Norway, we speak with uh, Sweden, Finland, and the Estonian uh, or, uh, country, because all those unions use golf box, and then we can do an integration with them. So if I want to play in Sweden, I'll, I'll, I'll click on Sweden and I'll get into the Swedish system. They use another system than golf box, but I'll get into this and I can book a tea time there. So Iceland would be, I would think, a part of this as well, I hope. Uh, if you ever go to any of the countries, you'd simply click on the country and you book a tea time like you do at home. If, um, if I, I'm, I've done playing and I didn't use my app when I played, there's still um, conservative players who wants to use the scorecard and uh, they get their friend to sign it and then they go home and then, uh, oh, I forgot to register the score. So, so in golf box, there is the score option um, to, to hand in scores. And in Denmark, it's been decided that when they hand in scores for courses we know in, in golf box, uh, there always have to be a whole score. So there's no guessing or anything because uh, the statistics on how many errors are made just from calculating wrong are crazy. It's 15 to 20 percent who can't calculate uh, 18 numbers together. So the Danish Golf Union has said you always have to enter the whole scores when, when you play in Denmark uh, because we know all the, all the holes. Um, and I can put in a, in a, a marker. I got them right here. So it was before he played, so I put in another one. So, to so I played with Thomas Bjorn, so he'll be my marker. And then I simply enter the scores, and the system will calculate everything for me because we know that they, they can't calculate uh, anything right. So I made a total of 38 points, and nothing will happen to my handicap until Thomas has approved my score. Um, so now, now a, a, a score a mail has gone to Thomas if he has an email in his system, in his profile, and if he logs into Golfbox, he will go into, um, he will be asked to approve, he will get a message as well, and he can click on approve, and he will have a, a score waiting uh, for him to, to be approved. And since my, my marker hasn't approved my score yet, I can actually go in and, and fix it. So, so um, if I made any mistakes, uh, I can go in and fix it and send it to him again. Or I can send a reminder to him, hey, you haven't, uh, you haven't fixed my, my um, you, haven't, you haven't approved my score yet. And, and it's of course important because uh, of, of the way uh, the, the handicap system works. Uh, you know you ha I, I did better my, than my handicap, so I know I have to play from my new handicap. Um, in Denmark, they, they, they made a, a rule saying if you go up, you're not playing with your new, ha you're always playing with your new handicap when you go down, but when you go up, it has to be registered electronically. Otherwise, you can just say you played three rounds and went up 0.3 and uh, no one can control it. So, so that's, a, that's a Danish rule that they made. I don't know what the rules are here. Uh, but, but, but that's the rule they made, uh, if you go up, you have to have it just as fast as possible. So the players can see any messages, they can actually even write a message in the system if they want to. It's a mini email system, uh, I don't think anyone is using it uh, like that, but, but it is possible to, to go in and uh, uh, write a little message to, to uh, if I want. I, I can't really see any reasons why it was a good idea when we made it back in 2004. Um, I doubt that there's been a hundred that used the function, but, but it's there. 
Uh, they can see if there's anything in the calendar, and the calendar again is a, is is you have to think what do I have on my web page? What do I want in Golfbox? We do have something uh, called a web service that can actually speak with your web page. So if you create a, a, a calendar here, it can go directly into the calendar on the web page. Um, and the same thing with the with the news. Uh, do I have the news on my web page, or do I want it uh, in Golfbox? Because I know that the Golfbox will be the main tool because they need to go there to book to sign up for tournaments and to report the scores. So so it's a it's a you know it's it, it's it's each club can can do all the things they they want to. And the the last one is the club tournaments is the schedule uh, of of the of uh, the clubs. It's uh, um, once the administrators in, in the tournament system has uh, built the whole schedule and open up for uh, booking and everything, then the schedule will, will show up for the players. And they can, um, the reason it's a little bit slow is that it's our test system and they do go, uh, <coughs> and they do go on, on uh, what's called, um, oh that I didn't need, um, what's it called? They sleep, uh, our, our servers, uh, um, on the test system a lot faster. Um, okay, I'll get back to that. Um, something they did is has broken the system, so that's that's nice when they knew I was here. Um, it worked yesterday. <laughs> um, but this is where they the players will go in and sign up, so I'll show you that as soon as they get it fixed. Okay. If you are an administrator in a golf club and you're also a player in the same golf club, you'll have two options. You'll have, you'll have the same login for, for, for everything, but you can go back and forth as a player and uh, you simply have an admin login and a player login and you don't have to get a, an admin login and a player login and have to remember everything. So if we put it on your, um, on your social security, you'll just jump back and forth with this, uh, with this option here. So in the uh, in the admin part of, of the tea time booking, it's um, I would say it's it's not difficult, but it is the most complicated part of our system. It uh, it can get really tricky. It doesn't have to be, but it can. There are so many options that you can you can do. Uh, there are so many rules you can set up. You can say that. This group can only play between seven and nine in the morning, and this group can only play between this and this, and, and so forth. All this can be set up. We have a, a golf club in Denmark. I don't know. Do you have club club uh, clubs in the club, like a senior club and a and a men's club and so forth? In Esbjerg in Denmark, they have 26 small clubs in the clubs that all has a a, a, a little booking right in the system. So, so maybe one little group of, of eight players have two tea times. They have uh, Saturday morning from 10 to 10, uh, 10.08, and they have the advantage of, of booking them first. And if they haven't booked them five days before, then they'd be open for everyone. So they can control 26, uh, 26 small uh, clubs. Uh, it, I, I told them that's ridiculous, but they can. <laughs> Uh, so we, we, we have the options of simply saying uh, in this group we'll, we'll allow them and everyone else will disallow within this, uh, this hour. Um, so in the setup there's a lot of information. Normally you do this once, you set up everything and then there's not a lot of things that change us in this tea time booking the, the, because it's, it's, it's almost always the same year round. Some clubs are, are experimenting with uh, maybe maybe a different amount, some minutes between tea times, maybe some had 10 minutes, but they would like to have, in Copenhagen, green fees, uh, or, the, or just members in general, is really pressed, so they'd like to have as many out. They don't care that if they put eight tea times out in an hour, everyone has to wait. You know, it's, it's bound to take five hours because you first hold it to part three, and there's no way it can handle eight minutes, but they don't care, they want people out. So they wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then people are starting a little bit to find out, okay, if we have 10 minutes, we only have six, but we have much more happy golfers because they don't have to wait. They can play under four hours. Uh, so, so that's the pretty much once everything is set up, 
that's what's changing, if, if, if anything. And that doesn't change in the middle of the season. That's something you, you talk about and then say, well, let's try this next year, see if it's better. Um, so once everything is set up, then, uh, then there's not a lot of changes. But, but obviously first in the setup, there is a lot of things to take into account. Uh, how does our tea time booking, do we have an, uh, do we have a heart? Do we have a lot of rules to, to, to implement? Or do we say, well, it's first come first and it's, uh, it's the same for everyone. Um, so we can decide that the, the, the tea times, uh, when do they start, uh, when do they close, how many is on a booking. Uh, and, and normally one to four is, is a golf round, uh, but it could be um, like, like our mats in, 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 in the indoor center, is they put one to eight because they don't care which mat you take. As long as there's one that's booked, then there's, there's eight rooms in there. Um, there can be a standard price on there, and that will change to to uh, to what is it? I krona. I T K I krona. I K R. I S K. Yeah. So we'll change to that, and 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 the range is important, of course. Um, and then you can set up how long uh, does it have to go before the members can or the the players can book again. So on a normal golf course, you play 18 rounds, you can book again, not before at least five hours, because you need to come back in and, and, and turn around. Uh, on a nine hole course, maybe it's two and a half hours um, that you put in here. Um, a, really new, a fairly new thing that we created is that um, in Copenhagen, uh, they would start to shop uh, tea times. They would book four tea times, and we hadn't seen this for I'll say, what, 13 years, we have never seen any misuse of, of people uh, booking 10 tea times and just taking the best one. But they would start to do that in Copenhagen. So we implemented something we call national control of overbooking. That means if you activate this on, on your, your tea time, and obviously you will all be told to do this on, on, your, main, uh, on your main golf courses, then I can't book a tea time uh, here and at another place within uh, the amount of hours that we set up uh, on the course. So if I have one at eight o'clock, I can't book one at nine o'clock in the other place. And and I think it will be quite a good feature to to help with the the few that actually is is misusing the system. Um, there's an option to lock the tea times uh, in Denmark. We have a lot of uh, and 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 uh, it's not just the older players, but we do have a lot of older players that. They want to make sure that they click the right button before they're done. So it takes a little while for them to finish the booking. Um, so we, we lock the system in whatever time you think is appropriate. My normal locking, I would say, is between three to five minutes because then they have time to search for the players, uh, find them, and no one else in that time, once they clicked on it, can go in and steal it in front of them because they came first. That also means that uh, in... In my club, we have men's sections and, and ladies' sections, uh, and we just have three clubs in, in the club, so we, we're one of the, the lucky ones. But my men's section, we can book 28 days in advance for the, for the Wednesdays, and it starts Sunday at 10 o'clock. So if I go into the day 28 ago, Sunday night at 10 o'clock, there are locks everywhere. The whole day is locked because people are booking their tea time. Um, and then 15 minutes after 10, there are no locks because they, everyone has booked their tea times. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's a good feature that helps, that, that helps the, the first one to click to finish and not the fastest one to get the tea time. Um, you can decide on your courses whether you allow national playing rights or not. Uh, do you have a lot of pay and play courses in, in Iceland? Or you have to, like in Denmark, we have to be a member of a golf club to, to play on them. And we have maybe five to eight pay and play clubs where everyone can go. Normally, they're very small, par three courses. Um, how is it here? So, so anyone, anyone who's not a golfer could come in out and play. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, money talks. Okay. Like, like, like it will be soon everywhere else. Um, uh, so, so these are not as important because these are just controlling that you have your rights in, 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 in the system. So they will just be, be clicked off. Uh, uh, we also have something called local playing rights, which means in, in, in Denmark, we have this green card, I think we call it. Uh, so you, 
get through the lessons and you get through the etiquette and all this and you get a education of becoming a golfer. And once I, I got the etiquette part and maybe a few lessons, I can get a local playing ride, which means I can play on my golf course, but I can't play anywhere else because I don't have the national playing ride. Uh, so I can only play on my course or the pay and play courses, of course. Um, then we have some other settings that's probably not so important. We can, we, can, uh, we can set a max of handicap if you have, if you don't want to have five beginners or four, four beginners playing at the same time, you can go in and say, we don't want anyone, we'd only want two over handicap 36, for instance, uh, on, on a tee time, so we don't have four handicap. What's your max, uh, your start handicap here? 54. 54. So in Denmark, they just raised it to 72. Yes, let that, but it's all about, uh, you know, yeah. improving. It's, it's about getting a good experience. They have, um, there's some holes that have five strokes on. So it will take longer when they play golf. There's no two ways around it. Even though they play ready golf, even though they play stable forward and they pick up the ball, they can hit uh, 10 times on a par, par five. It will take longer. So there's an option to say we don't want them uh, more than two at a time. Uh, those are options for the for the administrators to go back in time to to fix a, a tea time. Maybe maybe a guy uh, forgot to to register and he just went out with them. And you want to make sure your your stats are right, so you can go back in up to 48 hours and change the tea time. Um, and then there's a, the important one: the the booking on the website and the booking uh, is where we can go in and say. Our club mem members can book X amount of days in advance. Our green fee players can book X amount of days in advance. And we can differ differentiate this or we they can be the same. It, it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, in my club, we have uh, for the men's section and the ladies' sections, and there's a senior day on Thursdays. We have 28 days, and the green fee players can book uh, on those two days, seven days before. So if, if we haven't booked seven days before, all the tea times that are available are open for everyone. And no one, or rarely anyone, noticed that we have this rule, because if I want to go play in, in my club as, as a green fee player, it's normally something they do, you know, okay, let's see, on Thursday, should we play in Silkeborg? And they, they go look and there's free tea times. So, so it, it's, uh, it's good to have those options to, to do it uh, different ways. Um, how, how, how does it work in Iceland uh, when you come to the golf club? Is it, uh, is it mostly man staff that takes uh, receptions that uh, greet people? Or is it uh, 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 self-service uh, where you come in and you maybe put your name um, on, on in a book and then put some money in an in a envelope and... and Employees in the Almost everywhere. Okay, uh, there is some uh, some option in Denmark. It's ninety eight percent self service, uh, with some some staff in 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 the shop opening hours maybe. Uh, but but outside uh, outside the shop opening hours, it's it's it, it, there's one club that doesn't have self service. I think so, so and that's the Scandinavian, uh, which have staff from seven in the morning to ten at night. Um, so everyone else is using self-service. Uh, so we have some option of saying, uh, if we use self-service, then they have to come and confirm that they're actually here and they that they uh, that they um, that they that they're here to play, so they can come in and confirm. Uh, and if they don't confirm, then we can delete them from the tea time. So uh, a, a normal scenario in Denmark will be: I can book my tea time up to one hour before, if I. Some have two, but most will say one hour before uh, if they're in, in, uh, in close to the cities. Um, and the confirmation time will be maybe 10 minutes before. If I haven't confirmed my tea time 10 minutes before, then I will be automatically deleted from the tea time. And if there's anyone at the golf club who's waiting because it's a full day, and if anyone is standing out there waiting and is patient, well, then 10 minutes before the time will open and, and he can go in and book that. Um, and this can actually be done and, 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 uh, and be set up for, for the app where you can go in and say you can confirm it on, on the app when you're in a range of 
one kilometer from the golf club. So maybe the parking lot is, is uh, when you're in the parking lot, you can open the app and confirm that, that you're here. You can set up if you have online payment. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And you can set up if they have to pay. Um, prepayment is required. And you can set up if they actually do prepay, I give them a discount. Um, not sure why we've done it this way. I think you can do a minus discount so they pay more. In Sweden, if I want to book more than the normal uh, 14 days that they're open, let's say it's 14 days, I can actually book maybe two months in advance, but I have to pay extra to do that. So in Denmark, uh, in Norway, they said, well, if we have someone who wants to book two, two months in advance, we'll give them a discount because we want people in. They have to pay, of course, but we'll, we'll, we want to give them a discount if they want to book in advance. In Sweden, it's just the uh, opposite. If they want to book in advance, they pay an extra fee. Uh, we also have some options of putting in uh, some, uh, we call them articles. It can be, it's normally in Denmark, uh, Norway, used for buggies. So if you have 10 buggies that you rent out when you book a tea time, then you can add these articles to, to, the, uh, to the tea time booking. And when I book a, book a lesson, or book a lesson, book a, book a tea time, I can add an article and it will look into your setup saying if it's a buggy, maybe it needs to have a six hour turnaround before it can be rented out again. So if I have 10, I book one, then the next one comes, he can, there's only nine left. And not until the six hours has gone will the other one will be available again. Um, so as you can see, it's a lot of, lot, of, lot of options and it doesn't have to be complicated but it can be. Um, and for the, for, the, uh, for the administrators, you know, they can have as many resources as, as, they, as they want. They can have, we have a golf club that has uh, three uh, meeting rooms as well that they book and, and the, different, uh, the different groups of, of volunteers can book maybe the small meeting room for, for uh, an hour at a time and then they can uh, always see if there's something available in there. So, so the, the tea time booking for the administrator looks exactly the same as, as, the, as, the, um, uh, as the player, except that he doesn't have any, any favorites. So the administrator can choose a favorite for anyone. But he can put in a member number, uh, and he can look up players from, from all the, the unions that we actually have, um, that we're actually working with. So, so if a Norwegian player is coming here, you can look up him by his number. If a Scottish or Welsh player is coming here, you can, you can get their handicap and everything uh, directly from, from, from the database. Uh, and if Tiger Woods is coming, you can click on visitor and just put in Tiger Woods. So no database connection, nothing, just, just a, a guy from the street that comes in uh, and plays uh, uh, on the course. And I think I want to play with him. <laughs> he could pay more, that's, I, I would think so. so. So I actually haven't set up uh, the rules on the test system uh, for, to allow, um, there was a check mark to allow guests that are not uh, part of Golf Box. I didn't set this check mark, so now it will tell me, okay, now you're adding one that you, your rules doesn't allow you to, but because I'm an admin, I'll just, uh, I can go ahead and uh, approve it anyway. So you'll be told that you're breaking a rule, but as an admin, you can do whatever you want. Um, so I'll just go into, if my mail would start, because I just got an email somewhere. I have an email somewhere, if my, okay, never mind, my email won't work. But I just did, uh, did, did get, uh, did, just did receive an email from Tiger Woods and me about this, um, about the round that we played. So the system automatically sends out an email to everyone in the system that has an email, and, and, and I had the email, so, so I, get the, I get the information. Because Tiger does not have an email or a login to the system, we also add a green fee login if, uh, if, if he were to come in and say, uh, in Denmark we have a lot of touch screens where they can come in and confirm the tea times. 
um, and he can then use his screen feed login if I'm not there first to confirm that, that we are there. So these mails are, are only sent out if the member goes into their, to their uh, profile and say, I would like to receive emails from Golfbox about uh, regarding um, uh, tea time booking and tournaments and so forth. We're not allowed to send out if they don't check that uh, check mark. I'm certain we're going to find some way of, of either when we import all the players, either you have an, uh, either they're allowed to do it when we when we put them into the system, or we'll put them all as not allowed, and then they have to go in. But that's some, something uh, that will be discussed beforehand. What what we'll do. So the the, um, the administrators have a lot of other options as well in, besides booking tea times. They have the yield management system where they can go in and um, and set up all the different. Uh, all the different, we, we have uh, seasons to choose from, like uh, the green one is low season, the, the high, yellow one is high season, and the middle one is, is uh, uh, what did I say? Middle is yellow and high is uh, red. So I can go in and differ differentiate, I have the, the low seasons in the winter and the high, se uh, or in the spring we have the middle seasons, uh, and in the high is in the summer where we have uh, the highest discount. I can go in and have different ranges. When, what time would I like to have my um, my my uh, uh, what do they call them uh, blocks blocks of uh, of um, slots? They call them slots. So so in the morning from seven to nine, I have a slot. From nine to twelve, I have a slot. From twelve, and I can differentiate those on dates of the year. Some club have it from. 1st of January to 31st of December. Other clubs, uh, like my own club, they actually do one uh, for each week. Uh, uh, I can't remember why, but, uh, but uh, it's because I have different times in the weekend, so, so they, uh, they, they set up different times. And then you can go in, and basically the way, it, the, way the system works is that you have what's known uh, in the hotel business as a rack rate. It's your highest. If you ever open a closet in a hotel, there's a, this... There's this note on the, on, on, uh, on the wall or some, somewhere in the hotel. It has to be there saying the highest price of a hotel room. And it's never anywhere close to what you paid for the room. Uh, maybe it's two or three times higher than you paid, but it has to be in a hotel room. It's called a rack rate. Um, so we put in the rack rate, the highest amount of green fee you would ever think of charging any green fee players. And if you start thinking about, okay, I want to have these tea times for my members. And if any green fee players want to, to pay in our member times, then they have to pay for it. So to start thinking like that, then we can go in and set up, well, that's a, that's a really good idea. I'll, I'll change my rack rate to, um, let's change it to 1,000. Um, then my standard price is, is 1,000 Icelandic kroner, uh, maybe a little more. 10,000. I have no idea what it is. I have, no, this, I have to apologize. I've never been to a country where I have no idea what the currency is compared to the Danish kroner. I'm clueless. I, have, I, I just pay. I have no idea about how much I pay. <laughs> so we start with the rack rate and then we add discounts to the, t to the, to the different slots. So there can be a, a minimum price as well. So you say, okay, um, we have different club rebates, maybe we have membership um, uh, guest rebates and so forth. So I never want the, the, the price to go below 2,000. So with the worst or the best discounts I've ever given, uh, we don't want um, the price will always stay at minimum 2,000. Then you can go in and do some, some season rebates as well. So 10,000 is for the whole year. But in, in the low season, I'll, I'll know I'll add 5,000 already. So, so the, the price for the low season where we play on, I don't know if you can even play here, but, but in Denmark they play on, 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 on the mats and they put a hole in the middle of the fairway and people actually go play and pay money to do that. I have never figured out why, but, <laughs> but they do. Um, um, so you can, for each season, say uh, there's, a, there's a discount. Because remember, the rack rate is, is the rate that you normally don't get. It's just the highest price that you'll ever, ever get. And for the high season, I don't put in a discount because I want 10,000 in the busiest hours of the year because my course is a member course. I want to uh, 
tell green fees they can play here, but it's expensive. Um, and the, the, the prices change immediately uh, when I put in those different, uh, different discounts. And I can even go now, uh, go in and, and, and give more discounts on the five different slots. So if I know Saturday morning um, is, is busy and Saturday afternoon is not busy, I can add another discount uh, right away in to, to, the, to the afternoons on Saturday. So now after two o'clock, in, in, in the tea time booking, I'll get more than 50% discount uh, just from choosing two o'clock and after. In, in, in Silkeborg, which is quite a, a busy golf course, there's no one on the golf course Saturday after two o'clock. If you want to play golf uh, alone, go at three on a Saturday. You have the whole course for yourself. Uh, it's, and it's like that in almost all the Danish golf clubs. It's, uh, it's weird. There are, other, there are other ways of, of uh, making the, the amount go up and down. You can activate, I need to spell check this. You can activate a high uh, occupancy. So if there's a lot of players, a lot of uh, uh, tea times booked, then you can say, if, uh, if I look at the, the tea times before my time, the, the three tea times before and the three tea times after, and and it has to be it has to be more than or less than four available spots in those uh, in those uh, tea times. Then I will increase the price with fifty percent. So the system will automatically once those nine tea time or those six tea times has less than four uh, spots on each side, it will raise my price for the green fee. So this is more like real yield management. When a lot of people are booking flights for, for uh, Iceland, uh, the price will go up. Um, just even looking at prices, come back the next day, the price has gone up uh, because you, you've been looking at it. And search for hotels, hotels.com. You see the exact same thing if you come back two days later. Uh, you've been searching on it, you won't get the same price or rarely get the same price. You can put in automatic junior rebates, or you can go in and do you have uh, different memberships where some play green fee and some play pay full membership and never have to pay, or is it always full memberships? So no green fee memberships. <coughs> Not yet. So it, but but if if it if it's coming, it's possible to go in and say um, the system works that that your members will always get a hundred percent discount. So they will never have to pay anything unless you go in and say, "I have some, uh, I have some, um, some, uh, some weekday members. They can't uh, play, uh, um, or on weekdays they they have to uh, they get a zero percent discount. So that means weekday members in my system now get the same price as a green fee player." Uh, and I can then go and say, well, uh, it should probably be week weekends, right? So, so weekends, uh, they, they because they play to they pay to play only in the weekdays, but they can play in the weekend if they pay a green fee. So they get a discount uh, or, or, or uh, yeah, discount for the for the for the weekends, but zero percent because normally they would get a hundred. A lot of a lot of options in here. Um, uh, with setting up all this, I won't change it. Um, in the tea time booking as well, you can uh, you, you can have the options when when they come to the reception, they can uh, confirm the tea times for them, they can uh, mark them as paid, they can print a scorecard, um, they can uh, confirm them without printing a scorecard. If if they need to add a message to to these, they booked maybe. Uh, 10 days in advance and the green keeper comes in and tells you, I'm sorry, but we have to uh, poke holes in the greens. Can you inform the guys I've already booked the tea time? Well, then you can go in and add a message saying, um, you get a discount on the green fee because we're poking holes in the greens, we're sorry. Uh, and then when you, when you save it, it will send an email out to, to the players with the, with the email on. You can move tea time. You can, if you have a lot of guests that come in and and you book tea times for them. You, they have a tea time in the morning. They would like to have one the day after they come in once they're done playing. You can copy their 
uh, all their data and, and put them into the to the next one. I'm really falling behind, I, and I. Is, do, do we have a set time we have to be there? No. Okay. Good. Good. So yeah. So so give, give me just five more minutes, uh, and then I'll uh, show the app when we uh, when we are back from lunch. Um, the administrators have options to go in and put in blockings uh, in in the system. They can put in maybe in in some clubs they they open the tea time booking from six o'clock uh, till eight o'clock in Denmark. But from six to eight, you're not allowed to go out. But they would like to tell you that the greenkeepers are working on the course, so they put in a blocking two hours every day, and it just says the uh, course opens at eight. Uh, greenkeepers is on the course. Do not go out before eight. So they use blocking for that. They use blocking for um, for tournaments and, and if there's any coursework that has to be done, they use blockings. We also have something called warnings, which is almost the same as a blocking, except it's not visible. So a blocking will be will will be will will block the day. Um, let's say just uh, a blocking from from last part of the day. And it will not look friendly, and you cannot uh, book a blocking. It's only the admins that can book on top of block blockings. So no one now can book this. Uh, but I can also put in a warning, and that's mostly used for for stuff that doesn't close the course. Um, for instance, like we are we are poking holes in the green. Uh, be aware uh, and and let the greenkeepers uh, do the work uh, and all this. Uh, so when I click on on a tea time, I will get this warning first. Um, and, and once I book the tea time, it's also emailed out to all my, uh, it's on, on the email as well, because I may get the notice that they're poking holes, but my friends won't notice it because I booked the tea time. So it will be in the email. So now they actually see that there's something going on with the, with the, with the, uh, with the greens. And then they can, um, and then they can, you know, if they don't want to play when they're poking holes, they can do that. So, now the players will actually see this information every time they book the tea time. But it can, and this can be used to whatever the fantasy uh, allows you to do. It could even be if you have a restaurant and they say, we have a special on, on, on today's uh, meal. Can you put it in when they book the tea time? We have a spe what, what, what's today's special? Um, remember, today's special in the tea time is, is blah, blah, blah. If we have what we call the confirmation, uh, the mandatory confirmation, you have to say that you're here, otherwise you'll be deleted, then you also have the option of tracking all who's, uh, who's not showing up for the tea times. So you can, um, if, you, if, you, if you experience a lot of people book tea times and never show up, uh, you can keep track of them in the no-show list because they will be deleted and they will go into the no-show list. You control all, all the setup of your courses in, in, the, in the system as well. So all information about holes and course rating and slope and everything is, is set up. And you can have all the different courses you have in, in your club set up in here. Um, and this will be used, this information in Golfbox will be used in the tournament system uh, when, you, when you create tournaments. So, so I can have a, a, a course right now that is short because of the winter. And then April 1st or May 1st, we change into the summer, summer greens and the normal course, and we'll, we'll create a new course edition that uh, will be used then. So they, in, in, in my club, we have a winter course, and they actually play winter tournaments on, on it uh, with a fictive uh, course rating and slope. But it's in the system, so they can use it for all the tournaments. Uh, it's not official, so they don't, handi uh, don't regulate handicaps. And you can control that on, on the course as well. You can say, this is a winter course. So it's, not, it's, not, it's not approved for handicap adjustments. So during the winter, they can use the course, but they can't send back scores. They can't, the players can't go in and, and, and play around where they play in the snow. And then, hey, why don't I just register my, my score anyway? Because the, the score is not uh, approved for it. Um, yes. Let's do some questions.
Já, já, það er komið á spurningum uh, varandi þennan hluta tvö. Uh, Bjón, byrjum á þér. So the question is, if, if you are, as a guest, going to book a tea time, can you see the, uh, the people that have already booked tea times during that same day? Yeah, the see their gender, their handicap, and... and how many and are already booked, how many places are free? Okay, and, and how many tea times are available? Yes, so, so this, is, this is a live view of, of Silkeborg tomorrow. Um, so you have all the tea times uh, available, and if there's no dots on there, they're all available. Um, can you see that there's uh, colors? So we, uh, even though a lot of golf courses are switching into the meter on tees, we're keeping the gender colors um, that we have in golf. Yellow is for, for men, at least in Scandinavia, and red is for women. And uh, you can even see if there's a junior playing, he will be under 18, he will be blue. Um, once you're locked into the system, we will show the name, the handicap of the players. If you, if you have the tea time booking on your web page where you're not locked in, we will not show any public information or any, it will just show the, the dot and the handicap, but no name. Uh, so only once we know who you are in the system, we'll allow you to see who they actually are. And this function is used a lot more than we ever thought uh, players would use it. Uh, we had one uh, time, we had a little error in the system where it didn't show the names of the players. And I, don't have, I, I can't explain how many players said, I can't see whether uh, him or her is playing that day. So I can, um, it was a quick fix, but, but it was two hours of 200 members saying, I can't see who's playing. Why, why, why? Uh, so it's been used a lot to see um, to see who's playing, and and you can see if there's anything. If there's just three, there's one spot available. So if I click onto this, I'm automatically added to the to the tea time. And if I if I approve it now, it will be uh, I'll, they, all these players will get an email that I joined the tea time. Uh, I won't do that. Because this is this is actually uh, tomorrow, and even. Um, so you can see it for, for, for every day. And when it turns gray, normal color is yellow, but when it turns gray, that means it's, it's fully booked. So it's, it's, easy, it's easy to see where you can join uh, because they have, a, they have a, another color and they, have a, and they have a price as well still on there. So, answered your question? Okay, well, Hulta first and then Gunnar. Go ahead. Regarding the Park Avenue, uh, as a union and a golf club, uh, I'm thinking about the SMS reminders, the different scorebooks, et cetera, and also the top tip uh, recognition opportunities. Are there any difference? So the, the question so is. You talked about the SMS previously, so I'm thinking, can you just touch them out a bit? So, so the question is how can clubs uh, introduce their sponsors? Uh, through golf box, for example, when uh, when members are receiving messages or emails from the club, can a sponsor logo be added onto that? Currently, no. Currently, it's a standard email. Uh, we are uh, looking into getting more uh, where you can put in some standard text on on the messages sent out. But right now, uh, it's not. Okay. Let me just uh, expand because we okay. do have. If you want to send out information to all the members about a sponsor, a new sponsor, or an old sponsor, or anything, we do have a, a it's bad translation here, but it's called, we call merge documents, where we can send out a, an email to all the members. Uh, so you can go in, go in and create a letter uh, and send it to specific groups. Maybe there's a, a fashion show and you wanted to send it out to ladies over 40 years old or whatever, whoever is coming. Well, then you can go in and use the, the, the mail uh, merge function and send out information to the members that way. Good night. Yes, it's
Okay, the, the question is because during summertime we, we might get uh, 24 hours of sunshine. <coughs> we rarely do, but we get at least daylight for 24 hours. <laughs> Not the sun, but daylight. So how would that look if you have tea times available for booking from eight o uh, 6 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the night? We, we can do 23 hours of, uh, of booking in, in the system. And there's currently, I think, one club only 23 hours. Only okay. there has to be one. Has to be that one might hour. Might be a deal breaker. <laughs> there has to be one hour where we just of the way the system is, is built, and I think they do that in Lofoten. Um, they might, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Lofoten is a nifty golvetlur. So, so they they have right. booking from midnight till, well, it's actually, it's actually 24 hours. Yeah, it's I lied, sorry. Um, so if, if, if uh, I, I have to say, if your interval adds up like it does in Lofoten every 10 minutes, then you can have 24 hour booking. If, if it's a little bit crooked, so it doesn't add up to each hour, like um, eight and nine minutes, uh, it doesn't, doesn't overlap, so it will be it will be uh, zero zero, and then it will be zero two, and then zero five, and so forth. Then you don't get completely twenty four hours, but with ten minutes intervals, you can get twenty four hours uh, booking. So it will look smaller because it will have to squeeze everything, um, and it's the same thing for the player. It will look smaller, but it's, it's the hour and the minutes. So once they click on the tea time, same thing happens. It open it opens up for for the booking. Okay, we'll take a kasi svona eina tvær spurningar í viðbót og svo fara í hádegismat og svo komum við bara aftur og getum klára spurningar. Ómar, þess vel. Er einhver leið fyrir fyrirtæki til að sjá sem þú gerða? Þess fyrirtæki kom? Is there a possibility for clubs to allow their sponsors, mainly uh, uh, companies that they have sponsorship deals with, to allow these companies to book tea times online? You can create administrators for the for the companies, and then they can uh, just have rights for tea time booking. We have a lot of hotels in Sweden and Denmark and Bornholm, where they uh, where the hotels get a login from the golf clubs, and they go in and book. You said. Uh, when you get an overseas golfer coming over and he's booking a tea time, just sort of when you were booking Tiger Woods, could you kind of? Invoice them straight from the system, so he will take a tea time, for example, on six plus June now, and you can put his email in and send him confirmation, and then get him to pay the green fee or mm -hmm. percentage of the green fee. Not so at the moment. Only when he booked. Oh, sorry. Oh, the, question. The, the question was: If you have overseas uh, golfers that are not members of Golfbox, they don't have a login access to Golfbox. They want to book a tea time. Uh, could these uh, golfers be invoiced, and could could you send them SMS or, or email uh, confirmations, even though they're not members of, they don't have a membership login? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. So currently, the, you can't send them uh, uh, because the the payment is internet based, and you can't send them to this page without without the login. Um, it's definitely something we're working on because of the GDPR. Uh, you have to be able to do this. But right now you can you can uh, you can add him and you can add his email address and you can add a message on how to pay it. But you cannot send him through to the online payment. Yes, absolutely. Not as it as it is right now. Okay, in a way, but inquirer. I would think so. Yes, some some option of of the of the of the non members to be able to get a link to the payment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there are no more questions in Billy. We can come back with more questions about this topic after the holiday matin. And we are going to do a pause for now in half an hour, 40 minutes. We are going to go over to the coffee ESE. We are going to go over to the coffee ESE. We are going to go over to the coffee ESE.